Hello and good evening again. Thank you for joining us for the pre-show here at the Master Guide Leading the Way Convention, where we are celebrating 100 years of the Master Guide ministry. Praise God, because it's been 100 years of this wonderful ministry that's still standing and that it will continue to keep growing as well. My name is Hennessy Vega. We are here live from Estes Park in Colorado. And I'm so excited that you guys are joining us again for our third night. So please don't forget to share, to like, and to subscribe. If you are watching on the YouTube page, make sure to subscribe and follow uh, the NAD Youth page. And if you are on Facebook, make sure to follow the NAD Master Guide page and share. This is the time for you to share, like, and subscribe. And please interact with us in the comments. Let us know where you are watching from. If you want to shout out your church or your conference, your union, just make sure to put it in the comments and we'll be uh, addressing those comments in a little bit. So we're getting ready to get started on our main program, but before, as we've been doing the past couple of nights, we're going to be having some small interviews with people ha that have made an impact uh, here in the convention and who are leaders that are also um, having a great uh, part here at the convention. So I'm actually going to invite the worship team to come here and join us on camera. I'm gonna be asking you guys a few questions. So let's see, we have five of you here. And uh, let me ask you guys, where are you, what are your names and where are you guys from? Hi, my name is Daniela Cruz and I'm from Silver Spring MD. Hi, I'm Harold Osman and I'm from Barron Springs, Michigan. Hello, I'm Samuel Miranda, and I'm from uh, Maryland. Okay, okay, what, are you, what about you guys? Hi, I'm Heather Hernandez, and I'm also from Maryland. Hi, my name is Ethan Wu. I'm also from Maryland, but I just spent the past four years in Collegedale, Tennessee at Southern. Okay, okay, so Maryland is in the building. Um, so I mentioned you guys are part of the praise team. So what are your roles in the praise team? Do you guys play any instruments, or what do you guys do? So I am the lead vocalist on the praise team. Um, I just do whatever they want me to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I play keys, so it's fun. Okay. I am also a vocalist. I'm the guitarist, and I sing every now and then. Nice. Multiple talents over here. All right, so I know they have watched you guys on the screen every night, you know, singing the songs, and they have been very powerful and uplifting songs. So how do you guys go about choosing the songs for every night? Um, so for most of the songs, when I was looking for them, I was trying to find songs that really talk about being in the presence of God, you know, being in connection with him, being in communion, trying to get that wisdom and that peace from him, like the theme of, you know, um, this, this, the master guide, you know, leading yeah, way. leading the way, right? I'm trying to, you know, when we're leading the way, we always need to be influenced by God and only God. So most of these songs just talk about being with him and getting that wisdom and just being, you know, just getting everything from him. So, you know, to lead the way, yeah. Amen, amen. So how has been the, the process of you guys getting ready, maybe the warm-ups, or can you guys walk the audience through, how has it been, like, preparing uh, for each night? Okay, so usually how it goes is we'll have a practice earlier on before our sound check where we, you know, go over the songs, make sure the keys are good for everyone, make sure we know order of verse, chorus, bridge, everything is right um, before we go to our sound check, which is when we just go up to the mics, do live sound with vocals, instruments to make sure that what we have is good with AV. Um, usually that's delayed because we're waiting for Sam to finish getting dressed, but... <laughs> That's that's about the whole process, and then we do our we do our thing on stage. Does anybody else want to add to your personal getting ready process? Maybe. Okay. I remember when we were told we didn't get to it right away, but like three weeks ago, four weeks ago, we started practicing like twice a week. So it was really fun to practice, and we lost Ethan for a week, but but where did he go? He had complications so once he came back it was really fun because it, it fit all together and it was really awesome how it just it just worked in the end amen praise god for that and i'm gonna ask you guys a final question and i'm gonna ask all of you individually um so the theme is leading the way right so what does this leading the way mean to each one of you Let's start with you 
Oh. Um, leading the way means doing what most master guys like to do. They like to lead out. They like to be leaders. They like to take children and youth and young, uh, young adults places where you wouldn't regularly go with your with like the church ministry okay. and do fun stuff there. Okay. Um, for me, it really means to um, um, when God has ordained all of us to be responsible of taking care of his sheep, um, just really um, being with them. And our goal is to teach the gospel and really help guide people to find out about God's peace and find out about his love and really teach the gospel. So just being the influence that God wants us to be and being front of that ministry. So, yeah. Um, for me, leading the way would probably be just like showing everyone and leading them to the way that you experience God. So, for example, Master Guides, it's nature, or doing things that, like, that with God's creation, and, yeah, it's just showing or trying to bring people close, like, bringing people to feel God, I guess. Amen. What about you, God? Um, for me, leading the way is stepping up to the plate, even though you're nervous or scared, and uh, just, like, I don't know, just, like, helping other people. Yeah, let's do it, yeah. Yeah, kind of like that. I think leading the way means taking that first step, uh, even when it might seem scary, because everyone around you is scared. You're scared yourself. But lead, uh, being a leader and leading the way really means taking that first step, being like, hey, it's scary, but come on, we can do it. We have God. He can help us through. All right. Those were great answers. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. And, well, we'll see you guys in a little bit. They will get to see you guys in a little bit on stage uh, leading the worship team. So. We're going to uh, let you guys go and get ready and do those, you know, exercises to prepare uh, before we get started with the main program. Um, and before we continue with the interviews, I actually want to show you guys a recap video of our first day here at Estes Parks and all, uh, everything that happened on the first day. So let's see it.
So as you guys could see, that was only our first day recap video. Um, so you can see all of the wonderful activities that happen in just one day. Uh, our master guys have been having fun, interacting with the community, uh, learning like team leadership skills and interacting with each other from different conferences, from different states. So it's been great. So thank you so much. Also, shout out to the production team and the media team who's putting this together. I know uh, production usually doesn't get that much credit, but we're always behind the scenes. So shout out to you guys for all the hard work and everyone who put this event together for all the master guys and to celebrate 100 years of ministry. So today we actually had an outreach activity where we went out to the community and did uh, you know, some type of work for the communi community. So I'm gonna invite one of our volunteers uh, that participated in that event to join me here. Um, so I'm gonna ask uh, sister or brother uh, to introduce yourself. Uh, vamos a estar hablando un poquito en español. Hermano, ¿cuál es su nombre y qué hicieron el día de hoy? What's your name and what did you guys do today? Bueno, mi nombre es uh, Nino Hernández. Eh, soy de Texas. Y bueno, quiero compartir una experiencia que tuvimos hoy en a, a hacer servicio a la comunidad. Fuimos a ayudar a una persona que no podía eh, limpiar su yarda, su casa. Así que fue una linda experiencia ayudar a esa persona. Okay, so for those of you that didn't understand what he said, they basically went to help out uh, a resident in the area that she, for some reason, couldn't, wasn't able to do much. Um, so they helped out clean her house and her yard. So he said it was a wonderful experience to be able to participate in that. Um, ¿Cuánto trabajo había que hacer? ¿Qué tanto era lo que, lo que tenían que hacer? How much work was there to do? Bueno, sí, era, es un complejo grande, así que estuvimos trabajando ahí un par de horas, cortando la yarda, limpiando basura, pero es una linda experiencia porque puede uno ver la felicidad de las personas cuando uno se pone eh, al servicio de ellas. So they helped out to cut the grass, they helped out to pick up trash, and he said that what he liked the most was to, to be able to see the joy on the other person, to, to have been able to have been helped. So helping others can bring joy to others. So we encourage you guys to experience that and take action and do outreach and help out a neighbor, help out a friend, so that they can also experience that joy. Um, ¿Por qué decidió ir a esta actividad? Why did you decide to go to this activity? Bueno, yo creo que el Señor es el que nos dice lo que tenemos que hacer. Así que podríamos haber estado en otro lugar divirtiéndonos, pero el Señor nos, nos pidió que fuéramos ahí. Así que ahí estuvimos... Amen, amen. So he says that the Lord basically touched his heart, told him that this is where we should go, and that's where they went. And I think that's something very wonderful and very beautiful. Um, so le voy a preguntar también, porque yo sé que ha tenido también un booth aquí en, la, en, en donde estamos. ¿Qué es, lo que ha estado, ¿Qué es lo que ha estado pasando en ese booth? So he has a booth here in where we are at, and I'm asking him to tell us a little bit about that booth and the, how, how the experience has been. Bueno, eh, sí tenemos ahí... Eh, un booth para vender diferentes artículos de celebrando los 100 años de los días mayores y bueno lo más lindo aparte de las ventas es que conoce uno mucha gente y, y bueno pueden llevarse un recuerdo ¿no? de, de esta fecha tan especial so he has a booth here in, the, in where we are at and he says that the best part is being able to meet dif different people uh, you know he's been uh, selling articles that are for the master guide uh, convention so people can take those uh, articles home and remember this experience so thank you so much gracias por estar conmigo en este momento y que disfrute el resto de la programación de nada so now i'm gonna invite another one of our volunteers who also participated in this outreach so why don't you tell us your name and what was your experience like my name is nerva williams i'm from west palm beach florida um my experience was very um, a blessing to me i think uh the lady was blessed by us by the time we left after cleaning her yard and raking up everything, she was crying. She told, she called her sister and told us, told her how blessed she was by us. And I think for us, we should continue to maybe get in contact with our local um, Adventist church to go and continue visit her because right now she can't do it. She just had some medical issues. So I think for us as Master Guide and as Adventists, we should continue to follow up with her maybe have the local church go and visit her and see if she needs any help with anything else. And it was a blessing. It was a blessing. 
Um, why did you decide to go? Because that's what we're supposed to do as Christians to hand, lend a helping hand to somebody that can't do it. And uh, I think it was the spirit that led us there also because uh, the person that actually took us there rented an Airbnb from her. And uh, he could have rent anywhere else, but the spirit led him there to somebody that really needed help. Amen, amen. Praise God for that. And in what ways were you able to connect with God through this experience? Um, sorry. For me, I think it made me grow and to encourage me to continue doing what we do as Christian and as a community, to continue helping others, that those that can't help themselves. And it was a big blessing to me, big blessing. Amen, amen. I think that's great what you said, to encourage others to go out there and do the same for others. We can tell it was an emotional experience and so much joy that can come from this because we don't know how many people out there need our help and we're here to lead the way and show others that it is okay to go out and help out others. Um, so thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you continue to enjoy the rest of the convention, okay? Okay, so now I am gonna be bringing here our speaker for this evening. So hello, I see you here on Class A Uniform Master Guy. Why don't you introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself and what brought you here? Hi, I am Pastor Paula Olivier, uh, maiden name's fils -Aimé. by that you could tell. I'm Haitian American, and I'm here, I'm the Youth Director for the Northeastern Conference, and we're just here celebrating the 100 year anniversary of this incredible ministry. Amen, amen. I think that, that little truck behind us did a little, a little <laughs> appearance. So I hope everyone was able to catch that. And I want to ask you, like, what has been so far uh, one of your favorite experiences here at the Master Guard Convention? Uh, we took the tram to the top of a mountain. Um, it was kind of scary going up. <laughs> but when we got there, the altitude was about 8,700 feet. And we saw a lot of chipmunks climbed a lot of rocks, and it was just wonderful to be out in nature and commune with the Lord through his creation. Yes, yes, I agree. I had the opportunity to go as well, and it was absolutely beautiful. I actually got to, to feed some of the chipmunks as well. Like, they got really close to my hand, so that was very wonderful to, to experience and interact with God's creation, and I can just imagine how it's going to be like in heaven. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit of a sneak peek of what we are going to be hearing tonight uh, from you. Well, and combining the concept of leadership, that's my assignment, um, but I'm pulling uh, lessons from the life of Joseph. I believe his experience is something that we can all relate to, and particularly in this season. So I'm coming at it probably from an angle you might not have heard before, so please just come along. Ooh, that sounds exciting. Joseph is actually my favorite Bible character, so I'm looking forward to hearing the message that God has through you this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. I don't know if you have any last words that you would like to um, share with those who are watching at home and who, who might be um, thinking about becoming leaders in ministry as well. Um, it's a journey and you should embrace it. Um, life is gonna require things of you, whether you want, to, want it to or not, and leadership will prepare you for those things. So embrace the challenge. Come. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for that. And uh, thank you for joining us. Everybody is going to be excited to hear what you have for us tonight. So I'll let you go prepare and uh, we'll see you in a little bit. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, well, to start wrapping it up tonight, we actually got to enjoy supper together with everyone here at that convention. We had some tacos, some veggie tacos that were amazing let me tell you i was a little scared that i wasn't gonna make it on time for dinner because i was like getting ready in the hotel room and i couldn't have anybody to like bring me here on time so i made it here and i got online and uh, we were able to have some tacos they had uh, veggie meat it also had rice and beans um some sour cream guacamole which was delicious so thank you so much to the team that put this together uh, because it was great, and I know that a lot of people, um, I got to, see, to sit down uh, with some people from my conference, and we got to enjoy and talk a little bit about what their experiences were like, and it was very fulfilling to spend that time, you know, eating together, getting ready for tonight's service. 
Um, I believe we have some photos of that food so that you can also see uh, the amazing dinner that was prepared for us this evening. Uh, so we'll show you guys also so that you can enjoy it visually. I got to enjoy, <laughs> enjoy it in my belly, but you guys get to see some pictures um, and enjoy as well. You guys got to see some pictures of what we got to experience here in person and well hopefully you enjoyed your dinner wherever you are as well um, so this is it for tonight's pre-show we're gonna start getting ready to start the main program so thank you so much uh, for joining us and uh, also um, don't forget to share to like and to subscribe please do that so you can sh you can share the message other people can see and learn about this beautiful ministry. Also, if you haven't downloaded the YAP app, you can do it. You don't have to be here in person to have the app. Whatever you are, whatever country, whatever state you are, you can download the app and uh, enjoy the experience with us. So thank you so much for joining us. Have a good night for now, and we'll see you in a little bit.
Right. Buenas noches, guías mayores. Everybody who's online, we welcome you once again to the North American Division Master Guide Convention celebrating the 100 years. And can you repeat with me? We are. Oh, that was weak. Okay, here we go. Once again, can you say it with me? We are. All right, let's do it one more time. We are. By God's grace, we're leading the way, and we want to welcome you once again to this wonderful venue. The lights make it even better. Of course, when you go out, the mountains are amazing. The Sabbath is here, and I need to give some gifts away. Woohoo! Now, uh, there was a, a few of you who really wanted something and went over there and over there and said, I want it, I want it, I want it. And we, you know, we, we follow what the Bible says. And it says, when you seek and when you ask. So all these three gifts that we're going to give is for people that have asked plenty. All right? So the first one, and I'm just going to show you. It is a uh, water bottle. This is Pathfinders North America. Uh, the name of that person is from... The Oklahoma Conference. Oh, come on, Oklahoma. All right, all right, all right. Her name is, her name, woohoo, Adriana Mendoza. Where is Adriana? Oh, she went to the bathroom? Oh, okay, we'll wait for her. We'll, we'll, we'll give it to her, all right? The second one, the second one, same thing, uh, is from the Rocky Mountain Conference. Woohoo, that was close. Rocky Mountain Conference, and her name is Emma Daligowski. Is that correct? Where's Emma? Hey, she's coming. Yes. Can we give it up to Emma? I got to tell you, Emma has come with her mom. Oh, is that your mom? Is your mom? Your mom? Oh, she, oh, Adriana's coming, but we got Emma. Yeah, Emma's mom. So Emma has been a helper. She, uh, Emma is uh, a, a pathfinder or a adventurer? She's an adventurer, and I got to tell you, she has been helping out in the front over there. Okay? Can we give it up for Emma? And here is Adriana. All right, the last one, and then we start with the program. Yes, from the Washington Conference. Woo! Collins Oguta. There you go, Collins, come on. Now, Collins, I just met him. Uh, he is coming from uh, the East Africa Division. And moving into Washington Conference. And so he got here. We praise the Lord for him. All right, Colin. God bless you. We are going to start with our program. Let's enjoy and worship the Lord together. There you go. Okay, people, happy Sabbath. There you go, there you go, yes. Nice, beautiful place to enjoy Sabbath. Uh, as you know, every volunteer here is doing something else in some other place, and I'm in charge of all the internationals coming to the Pathfinding International Camp Prix that is going to happen in Gillette, Wyoming in 2024. Have you heard about that? <laughs> okay, let me tell you, and it, okay. Let me show you a video first, if my friends here can show it the video. So we can start with that. Pathfinders, are you ready for some history? Pathfinders, are you ready for some history making news? The International Pathfinder Campari is going west. In 2024, come play, learn, 
and worship at an exciting all new location in beautiful Wyoming. Get ready for bigger and better campgrounds and facilities, new places to explore, and a whole new world of amazing off-site activities. We'll see you at the International Pathfinder Camporee in Gillette, Wyoming. In 2019, it, it is called international because we receive a lot of friends from all over the world. In 2019, we have 4,000 international participants coming from more than 100 countries. And guess what? From those 4,000, 2,400 were hosted by local clubs that will provide tent and meals for those uh, participants. Me included, in 2009 and 2014, me, uh, my family and I, we had the, the opportunity to be guests in different clubs, and that was a blessing for us. And we enjoy really much and bless the Lord for, for those clubs that receive international guests. In your tables, you receive this card. This is a little card. In the QR code in this card, you will access a form. If your club is planning to receive internationals, Number one, you have to hurry up because, you know, we can provide as many <laughs> internationals as we can. Uh, and number two, please, it will be a blessing for you. You will experience different uniforms, different cultures, different practices, and your kids will enjoy being good uh, Samaritans, if you want, or awesome. hosted uh, for international friends. So that's on my part. We see you in Oshkosh. No, in Chilet, Wyoming. There you go. And now my friend Eric Jean Baptiste will tell us something else. All right. So what uh, Nestor and I will be doing is going to a lot of camperies to promote as well as with uh, Pastor Ron. So we're here at the NAD Master Guide Convention. We're going to have a quick video so we can post it. All right. And we're going to see which event is the loudest. So here is a bunch of master guides. Uh, let's see if we can do the loudest for this video, all right? I'm just going to say, are you guys excited for the Believe the Promise Campery in Gillette, Wyoming? And then you guys are going to stand up and shout, all right? Let's see if you guys can do it. Ready? All right. All right. Okay, they're ready. All right. NAD Master Guides, here at the NAD Master Guide Convention in Estes Park, Colorado. Are you guys excited for 2024 for Gillette, Wyoming, and believe the promise? Yeah! Thank you, thank you. Amen. Praise God. I'm excited as well. I cannot wait to be there with all of you. Yes. Believe the promise in Gillette this yes. year. Well, 2024. 2024. <laughs> it's coming soon. All right. All right. Good evening. Happy Sabbath. Happy, oh yes. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to our third night here at a master, the, our Master Guide Convention leading the way. I'm excited to be here with you guys again. My name is Hennessy Vega. I'm here with... Eric Jean-Baptiste. We're excited to be here tonight. Um, Eric, what have you done today? What was your favorite activity of the day? Oh, we, I have a story today. So uh, we went to the uh, coaster, the Mustang coaster, and my son and I got into one of those rides. My son got a little nervous, and I said, Ezra, just pray a prayer. And all of a sudden, an alarm went off, and they shut the ride down oh. for the entire day. So I had to turn to my son and said, what prayer did you pray? <laughs> I know you were nervous, but I wanted to go on the ride. So oh, that's no. what happened today. Well, prayer is powerful. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, hopefully next time you get to enjoy it. I know. I, know. I, I really want to. Next who who time, got yes. to enjoy the, the coaster, the Mustang coaster? Yes. We went on it like four times yesterday, so that was really fun. I'm not trying to rub it on your face, but it was a great experience. And those who enjoyed it as well, I'm sure you guys 
definitely enjoyed it because it was really fun. Awesome, awesome, <laughs> awesome. Yes, yes. I know there were a lot of other activities that they got to participate in. Um, today, I'm going to be honest, I got to sleep in a little bit because I was exhausted. Oh. But you know what I'm happy about? Yesterday, I told them that they couldn't leave this place without going to see the sunrise. Ah. And how many of you went to see the sunrise this morning? Yes, it was a nice. beautiful, beautiful experience. And those who have not yet gone, make sure you go tomorrow, wake up really early in the morning, go to the top of the mountain and enjoy God's art because it was truly, truly beautiful. Amen, amen. So we welcome you all, and we know that before we start, we have prayer. And we were talking about all these awesome events. Have you guys enjoyed the events at this convention? So we're going to bring up actually one of the leaders who put this together along with his wife, uh, Mr. Andrew Hernandez. All right. Good evening, good evening. So how do you enjoy today's uh, activities? Raise your hands. Who have enjoyed Estex Park, Colorado? Isn't it beautiful? I know I have, I've been blessed. But before we start this beautiful program, let's all stand so we can you know, have a word of prayer, please. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this wonderful place that you have given us, Father. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for keeping us safe in here in Essex Park, Colorado. And thank you for the, all the activities, Father. We ask you to be, as we start this program, that you could be with us, be in our midst. We ask in your name, amen. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Oh, I've had a great week. I'm sure you all have had a great week. It's the end of the day. And I'm sure we're all feeling tire tired. So if everyone wants to stand up and stretch real quick, come on, join me. Stand up, stand up and stretch. Stand up and stretch. If you can. Now stay standing and sing with us. <laughs>
us in our next song, Come Thou Fount.
want to be with you. The beginning may have been a little slow, but once club ministry started growing, it became unstoppable. In 1947, the Master Comrade Manual was once again... Please join us for the Master Guide song. The beginning may have been a little slow, but once club ministry started growing, it became unstoppable. In 1947, the Master Comrade Manual was once again revised and reprinted. Henry T. Berg started 23 Pathfinder Clubs in Central California Conference and appointed the first area coordinators. Youth Director Henry T. Berg also led the first leadership training camp, which was held the weekend of 4th July at Camp Wawona in the Central California Conference. The Pathfinder Club flag was created when Henry T. Berg felt a need to have a flag to use at leadership and Pathfinder functions. He asked one of his coordinators to create such a flag, using the emblem John Hancock had designed. Since the coordinator did not sew, she asked a friend, Helen Hobbs, to sew a flag. Together, the ladies decided on the colors that would best go with the emblem, and the flag that is proudly used around the world was made. The General Youth Conference directors, L. Dean W. Dunbar, Theodore E. Lucas, and Lawrence Arthur Skinner, asked the Pacific Union Youth Director, Joseph R. Nelson, to get his MV Council together and put down what the various conferences were doing in Pathfinder Ministry. The Council included Central California Conference, Henry T. Berg, Nevada, Utah Conference, Clark Smith, Northern California Conference, Glenn Philman, Southeastern California Conference, John H. Hancock, Southern California Conference, Miller Brockett, there were a number of sessions where these young men wrote down what they were doing in various areas of Pathfinder ministry. Henry T. Berg had written a How to Start a Pathfinder Club leaflet, and so had Lawrence Paulson in Southern California. The committee took the two and made one little booklet, which was called How to Start a Pathfinder Club. Clark Smith, a former military man, worked on a drill manual with assistance of Henry T. Berg to keep it kind, and our first Pathfinder drill manual was developed in 1949. In early 1949, while the committee met, John Hancock said to his friend Henry Berg, Henry, you should write a Pathfinder song. Henry, who did not read music, laughed and said, John, you should write the song. John Hancock was a well-known songwriter 
and had written several songs in the past for various Seventh-day Adventist functions, including Youth Congress. Henry didn't think much about a song until one Sabbath when he was driving to preach in Monterey, he thought that maybe he could write a poem and it could be put to music. He began thinking about the Pathfinder Pledge and Law and the words that would make young people proud to be part of the Pathfinder organization. As he drove, God gave him words, and he pulled his car to a stop by the side of the road and took out his Bible, a brochure for an evangelistic meeting, and turning it over, he wrote, Oh, we are the Pathfinders strong, the servants of God are we, faithful as we march along in kindness, truth, and purity. A message to tell the world, a truth that will set us free. King Jesus, the Savior, is coming back for you and me. Henry said, I thought that isn't bad, and drove on to my preaching appointment. On the return trip, his thoughts once again went to the words he had written, and a tune came to his mind. He hummed the tune and then sang the words to the tune, and it fit. He stopped the car once again and quickly drew some lines and tried to place dots where he thought the notes would go. He also said that he sang the song all the way home because he was afraid he would forget it. Upon arriving home, he dashed into the house and asked his wife to play what he had put down. It didn't sound right, so she said, Henry, sing the song, and place the notes where they belonged. Henry was still not sure it was good enough of a song, so he sent it to his friend Wayne Hopper at the Voice of Prophecy and asked him to make changes as necessary. Hopper sent the song back to Henry and told him that, it is a good song, go ahead and publish it. Henry often said God gave him that song, both the words and the music, and he never wrote any other song. The Pathfinder Club was presented to the GC Autumn Council in 1949. The club voted to take the General Conference session in San Francisco, California in 1950, where it was voted to authorize JMV Pathfinder Clubs for the world field. That same year, the name Master Comrade was changed to Master Guide, and Comrade was changed to Guide. In 1953, the first conference Pathfinder Campori Southern New England Conference was held in Camp Winnipeg, Ashburnham, Massachusetts. MV Voice of Youth was officially adopted in 1954. It was evangelistic meetings given by youth for youth, written by Desmond Hills, a General Conference Associate Youth Director. There was also a leader craft course developed that master guides could continue to learn and share. Pathfinder clubs were growing under hundreds of new master guides leading that were committed to God's mission. All right, all right. Praise God for this ministry, no? Yes, yes, yes. So we got to see another part of the Master God story. And honestly, let me just say that we can feel the presence of God here this evening, you know? Amen. With a shout out to the, to the praise team, to the worship team, because everybody was worshiping together. And we could definitely feel the presence of God here tonight. And Amen. I cannot wait to see what's going to happen through tonight's speaker. Yes. I'm excited as well. We, before we introduce her, though, let's just invite those who are watching at home as well as those who are here. You can take out your cell phones and right. share tonight's message. So where can we do that, Eric? You can find it on Facebook and YouTube, of course. The Facebook page is the North American Division Master Guide Facebook page. And, of course, for YouTube, it is the North American Division Youth Ministries YouTube page. Oh, YouTube channel. There yes, yes. So make sure you share, you like, and you subscribe so that other people can tune in, listen to tonight's message, and also learn about this wonderful ministry that it is the Master Guide Ministry. Amen. So without further ado, do you want to tell us who our speaker tonight is? Yes, we're going to bring her up, and she is the youth director for the Northeastern Conference in Atlantic Union. And as you can hear, there's a lot of nor Northeastern here. <laughs> yes. uh, Dr. Paula Olivier. All right. 
I invite you to come here on stage tonight. Before we give you the floor, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? I am Pastor Pula Fizeme Olivier. I am Haitian American. Woo, woo. Amen. And I am the youth director, as you heard, for the great Northeastern Conference in the house. <laughs> Praise God, praise God. One more thing. Yes. And I'm married to the wonderful Dr. Pastor Smith Olivier. Aww. <laughs> All right. So the floor is yours, and may God use you this evening. Thank you very oh, much. Yes, yes. Oh, I was going to ask one question. Sure. Yes. So as you guys can see, uh, she is decked out in this amazing outfit, of course, that Northeastern usually does. How is it leading such an institution that is known because I'm from Southern New England Conference, we know Northeastern, they always come prepared. How is it leading out in that conference? I think it's an incredible experience. I have a wonderful group of individuals that are extremely experienced and extremely knowledgeable. Uh, and they've been wonderful in helping me along the way so that we lead together as a team. So as long as Christ is first and we follow and obey the Lord, we'll be all right. Amen, amen, all right. I'm going to ask Pastor Armando if he'll come forward at this time and Pastor Nestor. Yes. Mi hermano. ¿Dónde está? I would try to impress you, but I might embarrass myself with my Spanish. Like, ven aquí, por favor. Yes, this is my hermano. <laughs> Uh, that's our, our thing together. I just want to present you this centennial pin of the Northeastern Conference, specially designed. It's beautifully designed. And to you, Nestor, as well. Let's put our hands together for this wonderful lead, these wonderful leaders. Amen, amen, amen. That's all. All right, I have a quick question. Does anybody here love Jesus? I didn't ask you if you like Jesus. I asked if you love Jesus. Does anybody love Jesus? Then if you're happy and you know it, say amen. If you're happy and you know it, shout hallelujah. If you're happy and you know it, say thank you, Jesus. If God is great, then I need you to stand up on your feet all over this place. Only if you believe that God is great. If God is great, not only do you stand, I believe the God that I serve deserves a standing ovation. Why don't you put your hands together and I want you to clap your hands like the devil's in between them. Clap your hands like the devil's in between them and hit them for your headache and hit them for your heartache and hit them for all the tears he made you shed. I thank God he is worthy to be praised. Can I get a witness here? Ah, okay, all right, all right, all right. Feeling good, sit down. You're making me nervous. Amen, amen. Okay. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Armando, and to your committee for inviting me to share a word on this extremely special occasion. Shout out to our master guides from NEC, again. And to, I have some MCCs who are also master guides who are here. And of course, shout out to all of our club ministries, Pathfinders and Adventurers and TLTs. I bring you greetings on behalf of my associate, uh, Pastor Javier Alcon, who is in the house. Amen, amen. A tremendous man of God who loves the youth work, and we just pleasure working with you, Pastor Alcon. And my other associate, Pastor Dudley Francois, who is currently on vacation. I'd like to thank also Dr. Uh, David McKenzie, our union youth director, who does a wonderful job in supporting us in the field. Come on and say amen. I bring you greetings for, give me a little bit more mic. I bring you greetings from my president, Dr. Abraham Jules, our executive secretary, Dr. Eldine King, and our treasurer, Pastor Robert Chandler. And last but certainly not least, I bring you greetings from my wonderful husband, 
who happens to be flying back home right now because he was abroad. And so we just want to um, enjoy ourselves this evening. Uh, my task was to preach on leadership, and that's what I'm going to do. Amen? I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Genesis. Now, Genesis, I know it's a difficult book to find. I'll give you a clue. The first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 37. It's sounding better, sounding better. I'll read verses 3 and 4, then verses 17 through 24. A familiar passage. I'll be reading from the New International Version. Now, Israel loved Joseph. He loved who? More than any other of his sons, because he had been born to him in his old age. And he made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Later on in the passage, Joseph is sent to look for his brothers, and he comes across a man who gives him some information. So verse 17, they have moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. But they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of this dreamer, of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into this cistern here in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. And then, so then, Joseph came to his brothers. They stripped him of his robe the ornate robe he was wearing. And they took him and threw him into the cistern. The cistern was empty. There was no water in it. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, this is your moment. This is your time. Have your way. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let everyone say so my assignment, 100 years of Master Guide ministry. Theme is leading the way. It has been, in other words, 100 years, and you are still expected to lead the way. Am I clear so far? So the question we must ask ourselves in this season is, who are you leading? My, my. In other words, I need you to understand the generation 100 years ago is not the same generation today. Am I telling the truth? So if we are going to be effective leaders, if we are going to effectively lead the way, it behooves us to understand this generation. Am I right about it? Now, millennials and Generation Z are wired differently. Did you know that? And even more critical, come on, hear me, even more critical for this understanding in this context is the fact that their expectations of leadership are different. I need you to hear me clearly, saints. Millennials and Generation Z are different. And not only that, their expectation from their leaders are different. Okay, let me see if I can make this walk. One, one author put it this way. Prior generations expected their leaders to be impeccable. Everyone say impeccable. This generation expects their leaders to be relatable. My, my, say relatable. Uh, the previous generation wanted and looked for in their leaders perfection. But this generation is looking for 
connection. Say connections, please. Prior generations expected authoritative leadership, but this generation is thirsting for authentic leadership. Say authentic. And when this weekend is over and you go back home and several weeks have passed by and as you reflect, perhaps you may forget about the words of impeccable versus relatable or perfection versus connection or authoritative versus authentic. If you forget all of that, please don't forget this. At least remember this one fact, this generation is relational. Can I be real with you today? When I travel across the field and I sit down and I speak to youth and young adults, there is a particular issue that seems to come up more often practically than any other issue. When they sit and they talk to me, the issue without fail that comes up, oh, have mercy, here it is, is church hurt. The issue that comes up the most is church hurt. So you have to understand what this generation is going through in order for you to effectively minister to them. There's no hurt like church hurt. Can I talk about it? You see, you got to understand, we expect mistreatment from the world. Come on, somebody. We expect mistreatment from that dog-eat-dog -dog world, that cutthroat business world, that everybody is my rival, so I try to sabotage your plans and diminish your accomplishments world. Does anybody know what the preacher is talking about? You see, we expect that from the world, but I'm going to tell you something. It hits our youth differently. When it comes from the church, there's no hurt like church hurt. Am I telling the truth in here? So, brothers and sisters, I need you to understand, as I look at our scripture reading today, as I look at our scripture reading today, I realize that one of the first and most prominent victims of church hurt was Joseph. Mmm. Mm. One of the first and most prominent victims of church hurt was Joseph. After all, let me break it down. Joseph and his brothers are the ancestors of the 12 tribes of Israel. Am I right? Who are the forerunners of the 12 apostles? Am I right? Who are the predecessors of the New Testament church? Lord have mercy. Ain't no hurt like church hurt. And if you look at the life of Joseph, you will see that he has taken these blows from his church family, both his blood family and his faith family. And I know I have someone listening today or watching today who knows firsthand what church hurt feels like, and Joseph had every right to feel hurt. Can I get a witness here? His brothers plotted against him. They stripped him. They dumped him into a pit, and they were going to sell him into slavery. Joseph has reason to feel hurt. Am I telling the truth? But can I tell you what gets me excited? Can I tell you what blows my mind? What blows my mind about the passages, as I look at the text, I see God at work. Can I tell you how I see God at work? Okay. God used, oh, come on, Jesus. God used the very same person that was hurt by the church to save his church. Okay, did that go over your head? God used the very same person that was hurt by the church in order to save his church. I look in the word, and this whole thing, this saga, culminates with Joseph telling his brothers in Genesis 50, you meant evil against me. But God, 
but God, but God meant it for good so that many lives would be saved. The one hurt by the church is the same one God used to save the church. I'll enjoy it by myself. You got to be careful who you write off. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. That's a sermon for another day. Joseph was a master guide's master guide. You know why I say that? Because despite all he went through, he exemplified the master guide law. He became an example in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. He was a master guide's master guide. Can I get a witness? I'm going to walk through this text a little bit more and get out your way. I ain't give you much time. Here it is. When I look at Joseph, he teaches us, oh, please don't miss this. Your purpose must surpass the pain in your life. Okay, 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 okay. Your purpose has got to surpass the pain in your life. Okay, can I talk to my young people for a minute? What God, hey, is about to do through you in this season is bigger than you. Oh, let me say it again. What God is about to do through you in this season is bigger than you. It's about his kingdom. Can I get a witness? I need you to understand that. Why, Armando? Because watch this. If, if, if your enemy can hinder you based on what somebody has done to you, you don't realize how many lives will be hindered based upon you now sitting on the sidelines licking your wounds? My, 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 it's the truth anyhow. Thank God that Joseph was a leader who was able to rise above his pain. Hallelujah. As I look at the passage, I'm touched by the fact, here are some few lessons about Joseph's life again, and then I'll get out your way. The Bible says, oh, watch this, y'all. The Bible says, when his brothers saw Joseph, they plotted to kill him. That's what the Bible says, right? The brothers, brothers, saw Joseph. They plotted to kill him. Okay, then, the behavior of the brothers, oh, have mercy, reminds me of a saying. Can I share that saying with you? Are you sure you want to hear this saying? I, are you really sure you want to hear what I'm going to say next? The behavior of the brothers remind me of a saying, oftentimes, mm, we are jealous of who we should be inspired by. Ooh. Oftentimes, we are jealous of who we should be inspired by. Repeat after me. Don't hate. Celebrate. Oftentimes, we are jealous. Oh, come on, somebody. Who we should be inspired by. So don't hate. Celebrate. The Bible says, when his brothers saw Joseph, they plotted to kill him. My friends, I need you to understand that you are not an accident. God has a calling over your life. And I have learned that when the devil can't kill you, he will try to kill your calling. And when the devil cannot kill your calling, he will try to kill your confidence. Oh, have mercy, have mercy. Am I preaching truth in here? If he can't kill you, he'll try to kill your calling. If he can't kill your calling, he'll try to kill your confidence. Oh, come on, somebody. And the way that he tries to kill your confidence, one of the ways is to apply pressure. 
Everybody say pressure. He applies pressure to attack your confidence. Master guys, there are some perfectly capable young people that you will be leading who struggle to accept greater responsibility because they are afraid of the pressure. And I want to declare to you, it is your responsibility as leaders to challenge them to take on new roles to take on new responsibilities and teach them how to embrace the pressure. Am I right about it? Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps I can give you an understanding via illustration. Um, vehicles nowadays have what is called the Tire Pressure Monitoring System, TPMS. Anybody have heard that before? What's the point of a TPMS? The point of a TPMS is, is to monitor the pressure that is in your tires. Oh, listen. And if there is a problem with the air pressure in your tire, oh, come on, somebody, then it will alert you that there's a problem. This became mandatory about 2007 because too many tires were exploding. Oh, man, I'm getting excited already. Listen, 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 listen. Because sometimes they discovered the tire would explode because it had too much air pressure in it, but it exploded. But what I came to find out is most of the time, tires were exploding not because of too much pressure, but because they did not have enough pressure. Can I walk with it? Listen, 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 listen. Amia, listen, listen. Okay, so what happens is when the tire doesn't have enough pressure, when it's under pressure, then the car sits upon it. And when the weight of the car sits upon an underinflated tire, the tire cannot handle it and the tire will explode. In case you missed it, you've got to understand that yes, sometimes too much pressure will prevent you from getting to your destination, but you also got to know that most of the time, not enough pressure can stop you from getting to your destination. Ooh. The point in life is not to avoid pressure, but to have the just right amount of pressure in order for you to make progress. Mm. Mm. Listen, y'all, pressure can be a good thing because mm, most people fail to succeed not because their life is too complicated, but because their life is too comfortable. Most people fail it not because your life is too complicated, but because your life is too downright comfortable. If you look at the scriptures, Joseph's journey to success started happening when he got kicked out of being the favored kid and became the comeback kid. They threw him in a pit, but he bounced back. Talk to me, somebody. They lied on him, but he bounced back. They put him in prison, but he, guess what? Bounce back. And I'm just wondering, do I have maybe four or five people in this place that can testify because of Jesus? I've got a spirit that helps me bounce back. Talk to me, somebody. You can't hold me down because of Jesus. I bounce back. You can't hold me back because of Jesus. I bounce back. You've got to be constituted in a way that if you hold on to God, no matter the circumstances, you will bounce I'm almost done. I'm going to get out of your way. I enjoy the word. I'm almost done. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm almost done. Here it is. Joseph ends up in prison with a butler and a baker. 
they each, oh, don't miss this, had a dream. And Joseph interprets the dream. There's a lot going on right there. I'm going to try to raise it to the surface for you. Some of you will get this today, some next week. The butler and the baker. There's something we don't know. Ends up in prison. In prison, they had a dream. Each of them. Joseph, in prison, interprets the dream. Now, I don't know what the butler did, and I don't know what the baker did that made them end up in prison, but I need you to catch this. While they were in prison, they were dreaming. Mm. Can you still dream while you are in prison by the circumstances of your life? Lord, have mercy. And Joseph in prison uses his gift despite the fact that he's in prison. So you've got two questions in the text to ask yourself. Can you still dream? Hey, even though you are in prison by the circumstances in life. The second question is, can you still tap? Come on like Joseph, into your purpose, even while you are confined. Ooh. Ooh. Saints, just maybe, just maybe that God is waiting for somebody who's going through a tough situation maybe God is waiting for you to demonstrate that you can still dream. Maybe God is waiting for you to demonstrate hey, that you will still tap into your purpose, that your circumstances will not define you. And I've discovered when I read God's word that if I can still tap into my purpose despite the prison, despite the bars, despite the confinement, despite the restriction, that God, my God, will give you something greater. One day, Pharaoh had a dream. No one can interpret the dream. And somebody said, there's a guy named Joseph in the prison that might be able to interpret your dream. They went and they got Joseph and pulled him out of prison. Come on, somebody. They bring him before Pharaoh. He interprets the dream for Pharaoh. Pharaoh decides, since you were able to interpret the problem, I now need you to manage the solution. Woo! But Pharaoh figured out that you can't manage the solution while you're in prison. So what I'm going to do is cancel your sentence. What I'm going to do is bring you out. What I'm going to do is set you up. What I'm going to do is make you the second in command in my kingdom. How many of you know that God can give you greater? They stripped him in the pit, but now he's second in command. The clothes they stole from him are now being replaced by a royal robe. Oh, come on, somebody. God will give you greater. So here's the lesson. This is a word for somebody that's going through a hard time right now. Like Joseph, watch this. Just perhaps your journey could be his. And you just don't know it yet. Joseph went from the pit to the prison to the palace. He went, yeah, you can clap, from the pit, yes, Jesus, to the prison, yes, Lord, to the palace. Can I get a witness? He went from the pit to where the, and then to the, I'm not hearing everybody. Joseph went from the, to the, to the, give it to me one more time. Joseph went from the, to the, to the. So here's my word for you. 
if you're going through a hard time, oh, listen, don't lose your mind in the pit because you're going to need your mind for the palace. Woo, come on, somebody. Don't lose your mind in the pit of your pain because you're going to need your mind to fulfill your purpose in the palace. Can I get a witness here? Let me talk to the church. Don't lose your mind over pettiness. You're going to need your mind for promotion. Don't lose your mind over problems because you're going to need your mind for the promise. Don't lose, come on somebody, don't lose your mind in the mess because you're going to need your mind for the mission. Hallelujah. He went from the pit to the prison to the palace and Joseph had to realize fact he was in the pit truth God had never left him and I want to close on this thought saints you have to learn to live life not based on facts, but on God's truth. <laughs> Are y'all hearing the preaching today? And that is because my flesh holds on to facts, but my spirit holds on to God's truth. Fact is, I may have to cry all night long. But truth is, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning time. Yo, fact is, whoa, I may not have some money. Truth is, my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Fact is, sometimes you feel like you are walking in darkness. Truth is, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Fact is, the enemy will hunt you down and surround you. But truth is, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Somebody ought to praise God right here. Fact is, you may not figure out the whole problem, but truth is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Fact is, I may get tired of praising. I may get tired of worshiping. I may get tired of lifting my hands. But truth is, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. There's a difference between fact and truth. And I want to live my life by the truth of the Word of God. If you get that, you get Joseph. Don't lose your mind in the pit because you're going to need your mind for the palace. Greater is coming. Greater is coming. And please don't forget what really blew my mind about this text. God used the very one hurt by the church to save the church. Master guides, I need you to lead accordingly. God bless you.
Wow. Powerful. What a word. What powerful, a word. powerful. Yes. Uh, I don't know about you, but if you are sitting around a pastor, this is how you know you've heard a word. If you sit next to a pastor and they're smiling, you've heard a word. So if you were sitting next to, like, look, look at Pastor Armando right now. <laughs> Everybody look at Pastor Armando. Do you see how his grin is from ear to ear? That means you have heard a word. Were you blessed tonight? Amen. 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 I feel like we all needed that message, you know. Yes. Joseph went from the pit to the palace. We can do the same. Nothing is impossible for God. We just Amen. have to keep our eyes on him. Amen. Eric, Amen. why don't you lead us in prayer so yes. that we may close tonight's session? Yes, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we have heard uh, this powerful word, we've been at this convention and we've listened to leaders uh, leaders of the past, leaders of the future, and our current leaders. We know that you are in this ministry. But remind us once again, just like you had to strengthen Joseph in the pit and in prison. Strengthen us. We went through a pandemic, and now we're looking at the other side, and we need you, O oh Lord. Lead this ministry, lead these leaders, so that when we leave this place tonight, we may come, go home to our places and know that you will lead us to the promised land, just as you did Joseph. So be with us, and thank you for your Sabbath. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. And for those of you watching at home, have a good night. We will see you again tomorrow at 10 o'clock for the morning program. Yes, see you then. Have a good night. So for those who are here in person, we're going to ask you to stay for a few moments. We have some announcements. Um, tomorrow, 9 a.m. Yes. So tomorrow, everyone. Have a good night, and we will see you tomorrow. 9 a.m. All right. God bless. afternoon and I said hey sorry about the place I they won't let me mow so I just 
she came back the next day and said, we're going to do this for you if you're okay with that. And I thought, oh my God, I'm really okay with that because I don't know how long it's going to be. They're saying six months before I can do anything strenuous with my Achilles heels swelling and stuff. So I'm just trying to be careful and they saved me a lot of time. And just so grateful. It was amazing and they did a much better job than I ever could and it was just so crazy that I was just talking to them and I said I'm sorry about the place and the, the doctors don't want me mowing yet and I'm not supposed to do anything you know strenuous for a little while and they were like can we help and it was it's just been amazing and it's really sweet and I don't even know what to say. I'm so excited and happy to have it done because I keep thinking, okay, I just need to get out here and mow and, and I just try not to do anything. It's hard not to do stuff when you need to. And so it's been awesome and they're so sweet. Good evening and welcome to our after show, our post show. I'm joined here by Pastor Paula. Thank you so much for that powerful, powerful message this evening. Before I ask you some questions, I just want to read some of the comments that we had today um, in the live stream. Uh, we had a comment from Jay Peters who said he never thought about looking at the story of Joseph from that perspective. Also, we had a comment from Sharon Howard that said that she was watching from Southern New Jersey. So shout out to Southern New Jersey. Also, Dr. Kina Griffith Henry, he said, God can give you greater. Praise God for that. And also our youth leader and Pastor Peralta said excellent message. Uh, as well as uh, we had a Facebook comment from Matthew Kimson who said, happy Sabbath to all ambassadors. They were watching from the Solomon Islands. And also uh, we had a comment on Facebook from Marie Monroeville who said amen to pressure. Mm. And also shout out to people watching from Kenya. Good morning. It is 5.50 a.m. So they were tuning in and they were here listening to the word of God through you. So I'm going to ask you, how did you feel up there sharing that message this evening? Well, I focus on the word. I'm excited about the word. Um, you know, when you write a message, it's not for others as much as it is for you as well. So I, for me, it's an extension. So I try to just saturate myself in the thought process. And it, and it really does amaze me how God works so differently than what human beings would do and how he goes out of his way to reach people we would discard. I, it just blows my mind. How was the process of preparing? for tonight's message. Do you want to tell us a little bit about like when did you start or what, what um, gave you the, the idea or what was put in your heart in order to deliver tonight's message? Well, I, I came early and I would sit through the services to try to get um, uh, the atmosphere. And I would listen to the other presenters to see what they had already covered and to see what angle the Lord would have me cover. And that became a very prayerful process. So I, I really did not know most of this week what the Lord would have. It started to come together, I think, like last night uh, to, to say this is the direction. So I just said, okay, Lord, we'll go this direction. Amen, amen. So you, it's 
some people think that it takes, you know, so much to get prepared. But when, when the Lord puts that in your heart, like you said, it, you got to witness and experience what was going on. And God put this in your heart and you were able to deliver that message. And being honest with you, it definitely touched my heart. This earlier today, I'm just going to share a quick testimony. I was like struggling a little bit, you know, battling in the pit. And then this morning, I actually spent some time alone with God. And what you said tonight, it was just confirmation from God that he has a better purpose, a higher purpose, and that he's going to use me and a lot of the people who heard the message here as well as at home. Um, there is a purpose, and God will take us from the pit to the palace. Amen. What are some words of encouragement that you would like to share with maybe people who who feel, you know, that they're still in the pit, you know, that they heard the message. And I know sometimes it's hard when we hear a word from God and we still struggle. Like, God, is this really for me? Like, what are some words that you have for those people that are still struggling a little bit? Number one, it's okay to struggle. Um, it's part of living this side of heaven. But I want you to interpret your struggle properly. A struggle is not necessarily a sign of God's disfavor. He could just simply be growing you. And sometimes you will find in life that you are able to minister better to others because of the struggles that you've been through. And there are certain things that you will be able to share with them to lift their spirits and to bring them through that nobody else can simply because of what you're going through. So it's not a sign of God's disfavor all the time. It is perhaps God preparing you indeed for something greater. So while you are in the pit, bloom where you're planted. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I know they are thankful as well for those words. And I mean, we're almost done. Today is, well, it's Friday evening, but it's Sabbath already. Tomorrow is our last day. Anything that you're looking forward to for our closing ceremony tomorrow? I'm actually looking forward to waking up early and watching that sunrise. I haven't been able to do it yet, so I'm really looking forward to that. Amen, mm -hmm. amen. You're definitely going to enjoy it. It's a great, great experience. So thank you so much for joining us for the after show. I'm going to let you go sign some some uh, Master Guide passports <laughs> because I know we have people waiting. So thank you so much for joining us tonight and may God continue to bless you and may God continue to bless your ministry. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us tonight and hope to see you again tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Mountain Time. I know it's morning for some of you already, but please join us. Uh, we cannot wait to spend more time with you and for you to join us virtually. And God bless, have a good night, have a good morning and God bless.